spiritually minded man. All right, leaving Socrates and going to Plato. Plato is famous for several um, of his sayings. He, unlike Socrates, he wrote a lot. Plato is from the aristocracy. Of the three sources of Socrates, we can't tell whether he came from poverty or the middle class, but he did not come from the aristocracy. He either came from poverty or somewhere in between. Plato was definitely of the aristocracy. Now, one of the most famous quotes that Plato made, and my wife said that she didn't realize it was said by Plato, but a quote that I had to use when I was teaching elementary school, do as I say, but don't do as I do. Now, why did I have to use this quote? As you can see, folk, my penmanship is bad. You start trying to teach 10-year-olds good penmanship, you say, okay, now, you youngsters, do what I say, but don't do what I do. Um, my wife tells me her father quoted that often and she didn't realize it was a quote from Plato. And then Plato realized his own moral failure, failings. Socrates, by the way, tried to teach morality. Among other things he taught, he tried to get you to replace your bad thoughts with better thoughts. Plato realized his own, perhaps realized his own moral shortcomings. Now, Plato studied the issue of what is real, and he developed a philosophy we sometimes call idealism. That what is real is but a shadow of the ideal. The ideal is in, you might say, another dimension. We're in a spiritual realm, around the corner, outside of our senses. But in the ideal world, we, uh, in the ideal world, our automobiles would never wear out. In the ideal world, our chairs would never get old and break. Everything would last forever. Our bodies would never get old and die and decay away. Everything would always be new. We'd make it new and it would stay new. Never get scratched or dented. Philosophy that there was a higher level of existence just above, you might say, or around the corner from us. And uh, what we lived in was but a shadow of the ideal world. Um, once we get to know what was the real, then he said he believed that at that point we could know truth. But truth was not to be found in this material world. Now, folk, here's my, I've got to insert my own opinions. I've been called opinionated. Without him realizing it, Plato was setting mankind's technology back by generations. By telling us that this material world we live in is but a shadow or an inferior place, he had guaranteed that his Greeks would not develop things like automobiles or mass production. I mean, we don't know anything about mass production. You put together a whole bunch of uh, parts, I maybe mean, a whole bunch of gadgets with the same parts, and it'll all work the same way. Plato did not see that much regularity and order in the universe. I mean, this was typical of paganism. The universe to him that he saw was not regular, it was not orderly, and um, therefore, the Greeks did not try to understand or develop it to its fullest. Plato also believed that the ideal form of government was a republic, not a democracy. The difference between a democracy and a republic is, in a republic only a few people take part, in a democracy everyone takes part. Well, Plato said that your ordinary person is just not smart enough, not wise enough, not intelligent enough, that you need a special class of people set apart to run the government. And this is why sometimes our government is called a Republican form of government, because we uh, pick representatives and senators and send them to Washington, and they meet in the assembly and they vote. But we can't have a democracy where that had been particularly with more than almost 300 million people, where that everybody can meet in one big super assembly and debate our laws and vote on issues, it would be unwieldy and impractical. Even if you only allowed the adults, you might have 100 million adults trying to get their voices made on an issue. Be unwieldy and practical. Now, let me hasten to state 
with today's modern computers, such a democracy might be possible someday, soon, where that everybody could get online and make their voice heard and have an instantaneous vote and the vote be counted by computer. Um, but again, this is jumping way ahead of the story a little bit. Um, he, again, he classified people. You can read for yourself how he classified people. There were the masses. The masses, he said, are driven not by wisdom or courage, but by desire. They'd be the producers, the artisans, farmers. Um, now, in a area of women, Plato believed that women should be educated, and he actually looked on women as being equal. Equal to men. He believed that women should even have a voice in government. And again, this was a philosophy that the Greeks did not adopt, not for many, many generations anyway. And he believed that men and women could associate together without becoming lovers, hence we have the term platonic. It comes from the idea of Plato, that men and women could be just friends and nothing else. Anybody have any comments? A lot of women particularly seem to believe that men and women can associate as friends and nothing else. It's been my experience, folks, that in the long run it's impossible. Now when you're unmarried, women you may have to associate with members of the opposite sex. But most of the friendships you form with them as the opposite sex are going to be very short and oftentimes come to a really hard, painful end unless you know when to walk away or when to run. All right, now if any of you want to dispute that, you the floor is open, I won't argue. <laughs> Anybody have a negative comment? But again, Plato believed you could. Keep in mind, oh, Plato. Didn't then Plato never married, except for Socrates. These three men, none of them ever married. Um, now, Plato went to Egypt, as did perhaps Socrates and some of the others. And while in Egypt, the Egyptian scholars, call them priests, call them what you will, told him, you Greeks have forgotten all of your history. But there once existed, out beyond the pillars of Hercules, an island called Atlantis. And the Atlantans were founded by a god named Atlas, ruled over by another god named Poseidon. And they uh, almost conquered the world, but you Greeks are the ones who stopped them, and apparently you've forgotten about it. And then shortly after you Greeks stopped them, the, city, the land of Atlas fell into the ocean and sank into the ocean. and has been largely forgotten about by you, but Atlantis was a very advanced place. There have been many, many a person who have looked for the city of Atlantis, many a person who have speculated about where it might be. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, yes, was named after Atlantis. The city of Atlanta, named after Atlantis. Recently I heard speculated that, the Atl that Atlantis was a pre-flood world that was destroyed in a huge flood. Um, again, there have been several movies made about it. I read you out an animated cartoon that was made about oh, the year 2000 or so, 2001 thereabouts. Um, actually, it may have been 1999, somewhere in that time frame, about the city of Atlantis. Um, the reason I saw it was one day my wife called me at work and said, uh, I'm please, I'm very sick, can you come home and tend the children? I told my boss, clocked out, went home, and I said to my wife, well, if you're a sick, you claim you are, maybe I ought to get them out of the house, we took all three of them to see the movie Atlantis. Um, and I kept them out of the house about four and a half, five hours, because I took them to a restaurant after the movie, and that way my wife got a chance to rest herself. Um, anyway, City of Atlantis, never found. Most recently, a man claimed that he found it right here in Spain. I began researching it. 
and uh, that it was blown over by a big super super tidal wave and uh, covered up by a tidal wave but uh, in the course of uh, digging other persons have disputed it he was using sonar and found that, that uh, there were supposedly solid shapes underground that had straight lines and straight lines almost never occur in nature all right um, I'll think of a lot more I could say about Plato and 3, but I'm going to move on to Aristotle. <clears throat>